All right, excellent guys. So uh, welcome to the pre-challenge info session. Uh, so this session is uh, particularly for two groups of people, people that have already signed up to our program and your challenge is beginning Monday so that you have, if you have any questions you need to ask or any uh, concerns or anything that you need to share before the challenge starts, you can ask those and have those answered. Uh, we also will share with you a few things that you need to get ready uh, to be prepared for your um, challenge. And those of you, the second group of people who are dialing in to find out about uh, the FitBanker challenge, what is the hype about, what's all of this FitBanker challenge and how are people getting such amazing results. But uh, before we do that, we'd love to share why we exist, like why are we doing what we're doing and, and why it really matters to us and why I personally have so much of my heart uh, and passion vested into this program. So we're going to get started and those of you that have joined, thank you for joining. Those of you listening in on the recording, uh, thank you for listening in and if you have any queries, you can reach out to us on our Facebook page. So we'll get started. And to set context, uh, one thing I discovered as I was growing up was in the area of health, in the area of exercise. I started growing into a family, into a community, into society that gave me the impression that, you know, the world is just a certain way. And if there was an obvious way to live where you can have a healthy lifestyle and have tasty food and have moderate level of exercise and still be healthy, um, that someone would have figured that out and told us about it. Uh, but what I did was I did what everybody did. We ate what everybody ate. So the way people socialized, the way people ate, the way people drank, the way people went to the gym or didn't go to the gym. So all that that was happening around me uh, in society was what I thought, this is normal and this is what everybody does and this is the best we can be. And if there was any other way of being, then somebody would have come up with that solution. Uh, but I realized that that's why 95% of uh, of the world are are in the game of averages. They're a statistic. That's why majority of the world of people are currently living and they're okay. They're almost blind and oblivious to things like lifestyle disease. When it hits members of our family or if us ourselves are living on medication, we are numb to that. We're numb to the impact. And it really only hits us when we're undergoing uh, an androscopy, when we're undergoing uh, a bypass when we are on uh, insulin medication because of diabetes or we are undergoing chemotherapy. Uh, I've had a lot of close family that I've lost. Uh, I have a lot of family that are undergoing uh, cancer treatment. I have a lot of people that are, uh, have been in my family and community that have been living on cholesterol medication, high BP medication, as though it is normal. It's a kind of assumed part of life. And I realized that that's just the world we grew into, but that's not really the only way to exist. So this quote by Steve Jobs is just to set context. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is, and your life is just to live your life inside the world. Try not to bash into the walls too much. Try to have a nice family life. Have fun. Save a little money. That's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact. Everything. Everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it, you can influence it, and once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. And I got that, that the level of physical activity we had growing up in a country like Zambia was influenced by things like uh, the security situation or uh, the lifestyle we could afford, we could move around in cars. So we just never got into a certain level of physical activity. Uh, and it never occurred to us as necessary. We thought that if you afforded luxuries, then you should uh, use those luxuries. Uh, but the impact is what happens to our bodies. So this is what we're looking to interrupt. We're looking to interrupt the status quo. And those of you that have joined or considering joining, it's your leadership that has pulled you into looking at this as something or an area that I want to transform. So I just want to acknowledge you guys for that listening and for your contribution to participating in a program like this. Because what we're doing, and I will come to this at the end of the webinar, is we're really causing leaders. We really are on a mission to transform a billion lives. And the only way we're going to do that is by empowering people in our community to become the leaders out there to inspire their community. So let's get started. 
Uh, I'm going to start, first of all, by sharing my story. Some of you have heard this, some of you don't know it, but I think it's important that you understand uh, what level of game I've got vested in you and your transformation simply because of the journey I went through. So I'd love to share a story about me going from fat banker to fit banker, right? Uh, the image on the left is me, and that was actually me when I thought I was fit. I'd probably lost about 5 or 10 kilos from when I was my heaviest. And uh, I went through this transformation, which totally took about a cumulative period of probably 5, 6 months. Um, but it was, you know, I lost X period of 1, 2 months, and then I flatlined, and there wasn't shift. And then suddenly, when I discovered this formula, it started plummeting my weight and my health and my fat percentage. So we're going to talk a bit about that journey. So what was it like for me prior? So I've been in the UK for close to 10 years or just over 10 years. And I used to work in the city as a finance professional. I used to work for uh, JP Morgan. I was vice president for about six years uh, before the end of my career in finance. And uh, I lived a great lifestyle, traveling, jet setting, working across the offices in New York, in India. Uh, in, in the UK uh, and abroad. And there was a host of parties we used to have, there's a host of socials we used to have, a lot of fun we used to have. And that used to cover up and mask um, the impact of that sort of lifestyle that was having on me, my body, my health, and also things like my self-confidence, my self-esteem. But things like self-confidence and self-esteem, I never knew were even being impacted because I could hide it. I could mask it with things like my sense of humor. I could hide it and mask it with things like the company I worked for, the salary I had, the bank balance I had. So those things really made me feel proud and empowered and it made me not want to look at or deal with what was happening to my, my body and more importantly my health. And at the end of it, that lifestyle, this is what turned out. So this is who I was, this is who I ended up being, a big guy that was 108 kilos at my peak or, or you know, whenever I decided to get on a scale at that level, something I wouldn't frequently do when I was quite uh, overweight and obese. And I was a size 40 waist. I'm now size 31, so I've lost about 9 inches around my waist. Uh, I was 108 kilos and probably between 35 and 40% fat. Uh, and I came down to about 6 or 5.9% fat. But while I was at my peak, I was also living a lifestyle that I thought we should live, you know, conforming to what society did. When you have that money, you go to all these uh, flary places and events and you treat yourself to what that money could afford. So this is a picture from Fringe Festival. And this was just over three years ago, so August 2013. My wife and I were there celebrating my wife's birthday. Very special occasion, special time to be out there. And while we're out there enjoying... Uh, you know, what that money and lifestyle could afford us. Uh, we were also celebrating another thing. We were celebrating that we were three months pregnant, and it was a double reason to celebrate. And while we were there, uh, everything took a 180-degree turn as we began the onset of a miscarriage. And, uh, and we lost our baby, and while we were there, literally, you know, my wife passed this thing, which was our miscarriage, and in that moment, we were just frustrated, our head down, we were heartbroken, and we were very helpless. And no bank balance or no title uh, or no sense of humor could uh, come in handy in a moment like that. Uh, what it did is it immediately puts us into questioning why us, what's wrong with us, uh, and questioning, you know, what is there? Is there something with us that's causing this issue? Uh, to add, you know, salt the wound, what happened is on our way back from the Fringe Festival the following day, festival, uh, on the train down after a long journey, I started getting these random heart palpitations. And it might have been a mix of the stress and the long train journey. And when I got home, I remember telling my wife, I said, you know what, it must just be me being stiff on the train and I'm just going to take some uh, water and I'll do some deep breathing and I'll sleep and I'm sure I'll be all right in the morning. And immediately she burst into tears and screamed. She goes, Ron, no, there's no way I'm waking up tomorrow having lost another one. And that moment, it just literally hit me that shit, like it's not just about me, but there are other people that depend on me being fit. Other people bank on my fitness. And, and that's part of the play on the name Fit Banker. But that evening I ended up 
in A&E and I was under observation, a host of blood tests and, uh, you know, scans and a whole host of, you know, checks and conversations and being under observation and medication. And uh, my wife was sat next to me the whole night. She slept there on the chair. And it really, really hit me how much others bank on our fitness. And that was the inspiration between FitBanker. I also got very clear for myself that I was not going to live a life dependent on the medical system. I don't have to be at the effect of doctors and nurses and syringes and medication. And I was done with that body and level of confidence that I was trying to mask. And, you know, enough was enough. And so the real decision comes in that moment where we draw a line under and we know we can do something about it. So that was the real inspiration between FitBank. And that's the fuel that had kept me going, that I'm very clear. I don't want to go back there. And that's how FitBanker came about. So from that geezer down to this geezer. Um, and part of creating FitBanker, or before FitBanker was created, it was a period of going through a whole host of research, trying multiple diets, trying multiple methods of fasting, trying multiple levels of uh, exercise and types of exercise. And many of them caused injury because I'm exercising while I'm overweight and that weight is causing an impact to me. So if you can see the photos there when I was 103 kilos and working my way down over the period down to about 77 kilos. Eventually I came down to 76.5. Used to do a whole host of boot camp. We still do that. Uh, a lot of training that was really, really intense. And I found a lot of diets that get you excited for a week and then the results don't last. So I got very clear for myself. I had to create a program and formula that works that's sustainable and that the results last. So I did my own transformation last January to April and it's now been a year and a half since and I've maintained my weight, I've maintained my fitness, I've maintained my strength. Not only that, but close to 200 lives now I've done the program and majority of them have demonstrated that they are, they've carried on maintaining this and it's sustainable. Part of the reason is we do it for 90 days. 90 days psychologically is, that's uh, close to 13 weeks, but psychologically if we implement a particular set of habits or adapt to a new lifestyle for 12 weeks, it becomes subconsciously embedded in us and then it doesn't feel like effort. It's something we do easily. To get you doing that, we need to create a community and a structure that will support you. So that's why we have an online community. This is why we have webinars almost weekly. So there are going to be 10 webinars over the 13 weeks of your challenge. This one is just a, uh, this one is an optional one. So the 10 webinars start from next week and uh, and then the three in a row, a break, three in a row, a break and so on. So it carries on that way. Um, and the dates were sent earlier for those of you that have, have been added to the chat, you've been provided the dates for webinars. Highly, highly recommend you put those in your diary, you do what you have to do, be on those webinars. Those are 10 conversations I'm asking to have with you over course and duration of this program and that's what will make a really effective and impactful difference to you, your performance, your participation. Um, so yeah, when I was when I went through this research, uh, talk of identifying opportunity. I put, put a quote today on our page about opportunity and uh, you guys identified us as an opportunity and we're grateful that you did because, you know, we've met either at an event or you've seen us online or, you know, we've... Uh, you know, you know me or somebody in the team informally, and as a result of that, we what we're offering was presented to you as an opportunity. We've got a solution, a service that is really causing phenomenal results. Similarly, it's designed out of. I was on Facebook one day, and I know these millionaire entrepreneurs who started this health transformation challenge. They basically paid personal trainers a thousand pound a month each. So between three of them for three months, they spent close to ten thousand pounds. Uh, all I did was 25 pounds in my gym and the research that we had now coined. So I was already I was already two and a half months into seeing my own results. So I basically started losing five and a half kilos a month, whereas previously it was taking me a whole year to lose eight kilos. Uh, but now I was losing five and a half kilos a month. So I knew I was going to win that transformation challenge. So I signed up to it. And when I had to post my photo looking like that with my shirt off, I just thought, oh my God, what will everybody think? What will my colleagues think? What will my family think? What will my in-laws think? And I just thought, wow, I'm again going back into a life of conforming to what society thinks of me and conforming to them. So and that's what keeps me fat. That's what keeps me a certain way. 
So the way I'm going to transform this is really put this declaration out there that this is what I'm out to transform. It creates this wide web and net of accountability by people seeing what I'm declaring. And then I really got to go for it because, you know, I'm not going to look stupid in front of that community. I'm really going to make that difference. And voila, at the end of 90 days, that's what happens. And one big thing we focus on is fat percentage. So the image on the left, I was close to 19, 20% fat. I'd already reduced about 10 or 15% by that time. And from there, I further came down to 11.3. And after my challenge, I carried on losing weight. And I went down to about 5.9% fat. And I came down to 60, 76 kilos. So a total 32 kilos were, I'd lost. And it was just a phenomenal, humbling transformation. But what I found was people really reaching out thereafter to want to know, how did you do this? Uh, how can we do it? What did you eat? And, and that's why we created a program. We created a structure. We said we'll make it 90 days, and I get to coach you. So I offered this online. Who'd like to join me? And for the next you know, 45 days, people kept inquiring and asking. And uh, I thought five or 10 friends would be polite with me, but 60 people then signed up to it. Uh, out of 60, we were very strict on certain criteria. Uh, I think 20 of those uh, didn't want to post their photos, so about 40 did. Out of 40, uh, there were two options. There was a free option where you do your own program, and then there was a paid option. So 28 people chose uh, the paid option. And out of those 28, 85% completed the challenge. And those that did the free program, about 25% completed it. Um, so it's just a demonstration when you put something at stake, when you put your photo at stake, when you paid for something, when you've attached value to it, you really bring a different level of participation and the results show. So the next challenge for those of you that are listening in, um, to find out, obviously, the next challenge starts on Monday, the 19th of September. You can sign up at fitbanker.com go. The online price now is, I think, $2.99 till those packs run out. Uh, we do offer specials once in a while, but um, I'll let you know if there's something we can offer. I want to now talk about those of you that have signed up to the program. So those of you that have signed up, I want to get something just very uh, clear for you guys. Um, so I've got at the moment uh, a couple of you guys on, and you're already going to be part of the same community. Could I just ask you to introduce yourself, so who you are and where you're joining us from, and why are you doing this? So should we start with Bipin? Yeah, thank you. My name is Bipin, and uh, I'm in London. Uh, I know Ronnie uh, as one of my friends. Uh, what it is, is I've decided to join seeing the transformation that he's had. Although I felt that I could not do it as um, two, but uh, seeing what he's done for his dad, I said, why not? And I'm going to give it a go. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, why are you doing it? What's the real inspiration behind? Why does it matter that uh, it helps you transform? The main thing is what you talked in the beginning, and I was just thinking about it while you. But I've got my, uh, as you know, I have a thirteen-year-old with me, yeah, and I need to be around for him. Awesome, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Bipinako, so much for sharing that. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, Dad's transformation when I uh, went through mine, they would see, they would see on Facebook, we would speak, we would Skype. They've seen how much I changed. But that didn't make so much of a difference. But when they came over on holiday, the first day I sat them down and I had a very straight conversation with dad. And I was like, you know, we never got to know granddad. We only know about him through language. And you guys have given us so much in terms of teaching us creativity, our sense of humor, uh, you know, the love that you give us. And it, what a shame it will be that our kids won't get to get that from their grandparents. So my invite to you is create a bigger game of why you need to be around and why you need to be healthy. And my invite to him was to start now relating to his body, his body as a vehicle that needs to be around for his grandchildren and not as someone that needs to be around to please his tongue or his senses or, or his tummy. So not to be fueled by our five senses, which are just hooks to get us into temptation that actually devalues our body if we are controlled by our senses rather than us controlling our senses. So, Vivianako, thank you so much for sharing that. And that was one of the things that really transformed my dad's participation and mom's as well. 
kept staying present to that and kept reminding them of their greater why. Um, so this is why we tell when you sh post your photo to our page, state what your greater why is, so you're very clear why you're doing this. Um, well, I wasn't. I mean, sorry to interrupt. That uh, you see, what happened was I wasn't sure whether we, I've, I've seen how you've transformed and how, but I. I thought that I, I couldn't do it because, like, uh, as you say, I've got a few other uh, problems with regarding my spondylitis and movement and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but then I thought about it that because a few years, uh, well, nearly 13 years back when the boy was born, yeah. and I gave up smoking, and I, I, to this day, then I never went back to smoking after smoking for 30 years. And all because I said I wasn't going to give it a go. I'm around. I'm saying again, I'm going to give it a go. Let's see what we can do. Awesome. Awesome. Now, that's the right mindset, uh, Bipin Uncle. So, thank you for bringing that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, in webinar one, we're going to talk about this next week's webinar, but we're going to talk about limiting beliefs. So, just a limiting belief is something you think that's in the way of causing results for you, right? So, you might have a limiting view that food is this way. You cannot not eat these kinds of foods. You might have a limiting belief that because I have this medical condition or this injury, I might not be able to cause the results. So in the first webinar, we won't talk about that now, but in webinar one we will say, just consider that that's a limiting belief. And okay. if you have that point of view, it might limit your participation. So in webinar one, we will work on disappearing those so that there's a kind of liberation and freedom to move through the program. Okay, okay. Manisha, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, my name is Manisha. Um, I'm in the U.S. Um, I know Rana from Zambia, and um, I've had. I've, I'm a mother of three children. I just had my son in January of this year. Um, it was a very, very intense and complicated pregnancy, um, and a lot of sicknesses came up throughout the pregnancy. Um, and I was under the impression that after the delivery was done, things would get better. Instead, things got worse. And so, um, you know, I'm, having Ronak on my Facebook and following him and looking at him, um, I thought this would be a great opportunity for me <clears throat> to change um, my eating habits and everything. Um, I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes, which did clear after the pregnancy, but um, recently, within the last three months of having it retested, um, it's coming back as pre-diabetes. Uh, pre um, I've had a thyroid problem for a long time, and it seems to not be getting any better. Um, and then I have other complications that came up um, within the last six months. and. I was told by a doctor um, not too long back that if I don't figure out how to lose my weight, I won't be there for my children <laughs> for too long. Manisha, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you so much for sharing that. This is really, really why I tell people when you participate on this program, put your greater why. Because there are people that are willing to sit tolerating what's going on, and as it impacts their life, they watch their own deterioration, and they're almost numb or helpless to it because they think there isn't something that can be done. And we are really, really shifting things. I want to just share some of the, the immediate health impacts. My dad, after about 10 or so years or, or more, maybe 15 years on cholesterol, statins, and on high BP medication, was told this year, six months after his program, of his participation in, in our program uh, to get off that medication, right? Uh, my uh, Another participant in Zambia had high creatinine levels in his kidneys. He was on cholesterol medication, high BP medication. Two months into our program, two months, he was told to discontinue his medication. He literally has a three-and-a-half-year-old kid, and he came to me. His English isn't even great, and I had to set up the technology on his phone while I was on holiday. And I just spoke to him, and he just said, look, I just want to be around for my boy. He's only three years old, and I'm having all these problems. And now in town, he's an absolute inspiration for people, what he's caused. Uh, and the third person is a lady who had been trying for a while to have a baby, and they were struggling to conceive naturally. They decided to go for IVF, but even the IVF process 
was not being approved for her to start because her obesity was above a certain level. So it was lose-lose for her. She couldn't uh, transform, lose her weight to be approved to start the IVF process. And I said, you join this program and we'll cause you phenomenal results. Within the three months, she lost 12.8 kilos. Phenomenal results. She lost 12.8 kilos, which is about uh, 27, 28 pounds. And uh, she got approved for IVF and now she's about six months pregnant. So, you know, we're having a really real immediate and effective impact on people's lives, on health. And Manisha, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, no, no. <laughs> this is something that will really, really make a difference once you just understand simple things like your blood sugar, what foods are triggering it, causing the spikes in it, what insulin is, how to work against those slowing you down. And play the program by design. It's very easy and uh, you will see the results within no time. Okay, so that said, uh, I'd like to share what we are and what we're not. So first of all, we're just providing education. It's the best we can do online because we're not physically in person with you. I can't push anyone harder enough. I can't crack the whip on anybody. I can't kick anybody in the butt. I can do it virtually and hopefully if that helps and if that inspires you, then let me know and I will keep giving some virtual butt kicks. Uh, but what we do is we give those by uh, our webinars. So every week you come to the webinar, it's an opportunity for you to get inspired with something and the more you share uh, on the closed group, the more you share to our public page, the more people can come and empower you. The human mind is driven by two things, to look good and avoid looking bad. So when you share your progress, people support you, they empower you, they influence you to keep going further. I, I only offer and share what worked for me. That's how I got through my 90 days. I kept sharing my journey and I got so much positive support and very different from showing off. I do it because I want to show people it's possible and I want you guys to stay true to your greater why, your children that you're doing it for. Uh, the second thing is what we're doing is we're developing leaders. So as I'm speaking to you now, this I'm going to be speaking to you through the webinars and I'm really committed to developing the leadership amongst people and coaching you guys on being a stand for people out there. Uh, what we are not, we're not a gym, uh, we're not offering personal training nor nutritional advice even though I'm a personal trainer and nutritionist. Uh, we do have within our team personal trainers, myself, we do have participants on the program who are naturopaths, uh, dietitians, uh, we've got about eight or nine medical professionals. So what I mean by that, we have about six or seven medical doctors who have done our program. We have nurses on the program, we have uh, um, people who have other medical doctorates on the program. We have uh, a host of people on our program that are in the profession. They know the theory. They actually work there, but they themselves were very obese. Our cover photo on our page is of Dr. Sijo Parakatil, who is 46 years old, and he was obese. And we transformed him through a simple conversation and sharing our formula. And he's now 53 pounds lighter. And every day you'll see, he almost tags me every day on Facebook, uh, when he's training in the gym and he is getting to share what he's doing keeps him being fueled and in action. So that's my invite to people around uh, sharing. Uh, as you join a gym, if you're new to gym or if you're doing some of the exercises at home, put your safety first. If you're unclear on any exercise, get somebody to train you on the proper form. If you already work with a personal trainer, brilliant, we say carry that on. You know, exercise is only about 10 or 20 percent what makes the difference. 30 to 40 percent has got to do with nutrition and 50 percent has really got to do with the mindset and the willingness to learn, the openness to be contributed to. And if there are any foods that you cannot eat, if you're allergic to anything, you should avoid them, you should abstain from them. If there's anything you're unsure about, check with your medical professional. But nothing on our program is, uh, uh, is yuck, nothing on our program is, uh, you know, going to inflame anything or risk it's very simple healthy eating and when you discover it you'll be like is that it is it that easy and knowing how easy it is you will get to empower and inspire others we want you guys to transform your families your communities and so on so we are an education provider so you've signed up now uh, what next so you must check and those of you listening on the recording if you have signed up have you received an email called what next uh, so you guys have you guys received that yeah, I've received that. Okay. Uh, and well, I haven't okay. received the question yet. Okay, I'll, I'll check that. So you should have received a questionnaire, which is asking you a few questions around your 
uh, things like your body type, you'll complete two surveys and we'll ascertain your body type according to Ayurveda and according to bodybuilding. And we will ask you various questions like emotional and psychological triggers. We will ask you questions like um, uh, your greater why, your goals, your starting weight, your starting fat percentage and so on. And if you can input that all in, it will be gr brilliant for you to uh, get mentally and emotionally set for what you're up to. Um, and if you need to remember any of the data that you put in, please save a copy yourself or copy and paste the data because once you submit the Google form, it will be uh, at our end and then it's a process every time people ask us to copy and paste. So if you do that at the time you're submitting it, you have your data on record as well. Um, and then that's once you've done the questionnaire. Then the next thing, the urgent one, is your before photos. So well done to Manisha for being the first one to do that. Uh, really awesome. I'm going to give you guys one tip around your before photos, and Manisha, you have an option to just uh, do this yourself, is we really want okay. to use real participants' photos um, as our models on our posters because you will be our tomorrow's poster boy or poster girl. So why, why do I say that? I say that because when you take your before photo, we highly recommend you take it against a white background and in good lighting and with high definition on your camera, on your phone, or on a proper camera. So if you see C. Joe's photo on our cover photo, it's brilliant. It was taken actually by a professional photographer, which he happened to have taken around the time he started. So he used those photos. Um, so my invite to you guys is, even if you've already posted yours, Manisha, I, I noticed yours had some poor lighting. So if you retook it and keep that on file or share it on the closed group, we can use that as a starting point to measure. So if you take it tomorrow in the daytime, if you take it with good lighting, well, it's still daytime for you guys, uh, please retake a lovely one with real clarity. And if you can get it against a white background, then it's even a lot more clearer so that we can, uh, when our designer wants to merge your before and after photos, we ask you for your photos if you'd love to share them for us to create a professional image. Uh, and we can cop out all the background noise uh, but it's easier to do that when the background is a very different color to the color of your clothing. So if you do take that, that would be great. And please also share your greater why. So in your case, Manisha, if you've already posted the photo, you can actually right click on it and click edit post uh, or click okay. on the arrow in the top right corner if you want to edit your greater why. But be really authentic, be vulnerable and be a contribution to others by really sharing what's driving you to do this. Um, and then we ask you to search for the closed group Fit Banker Campus. Manisha, you already added there, so well done. And uh, okay. Uncle, as soon as you've posted your before photo, uh, yeah. search for this group and we will approve you to the group. Um, I'll be want... doing that tomorrow. All right, excellent. excellent. Thanks, Mr. Uncle. What we want to do is we are shifting the way social media is used. On social media, there's a lot of just banter, there's a lot of jokes, there's a lot of negativity, there's a lot of moaning, there's a lot of complaining about the political system, the weather, the blah, blah, blah. We want to use it to be filled with positive, healthy, and inspiring content. And the way we're going to do that is you guys. You guys are our models. You guys are the messengers. You guys are the people inspiring the next challenge and, and your families and the next generation and society. And the world and the lives around each of you are now inspired and choose to start living. By you sharing that you're in the gym every day or you're on your walk or you share how many kilometers you walked and what calories you burnt, you are sending a message to people that this is the new normal. Right? So... People will be like, wow, people actually do that as exercise. I've got to do that. If Bipin Bai can do this much, I must be able to do at least three kilometers a day. If Bipin Bai can do five kilometers, I should at least do two kilometers a day. So whatever you do, share that because you will make a difference to somebody without you knowing it. Just as the two of you have seen my journey and me sharing my dad's photos, you are inspired to sign up. Get that you guys have the same power. Remember, we're developing leaders. And so we're going to continually invite you guys to use social media as a way to convey inspiration and a message as part of your leadership. Declaration. Declaration, uh, we talk in the webinar one about the five steps of how our program works, the science of it. But the fourth point is around declaration. So your declaration is that thing that you've posted and you're continually declaring your game. So I saw Manisha was brilliant. Somebody asked, what's your goal? And Manisha said to lose 20 pounds. By verbalizing that, by putting that in word out there, you've made a declaration. You now have clarity on where to go. So this is one thing we do. Those of you that are competitive, in the first 10 days, we ask people to take an update and share their progress for the first 10 days. 
the record of weight loss in the first 10 days is 6 kilos. It's on the current challenge in August. So in his first 10 days, that guy lost 6 kilos. Prior to that, the record was 5.4 kilos. Uh, and these guys were much heavier. They were 120 kilos and above weight. So if you are lighter, if you are 70, 80 kilos, it might be less. But as a percentage of your body weight, if you lose between 3% or 5% of your body weight, that is phenomenal. That is brilliant. So those of you, the competitive ones amongst you, if you'd like to uh, keep sharing what your declaration is and start from day one. If you've already posted your before photo, you can also already start now. You've posted your weight and you're going to start eating healthy and implementing some simple activity. On Saturday morning, uh, we will actually send you, on Saturday morning, we, you will get an email which will tell you some five or six foods to avoid. So immediately you have to avoid them for the first five weeks. Uh, you don't touch them and we're going to tell you a minimum amount of activity you need to do. This activity could be as basic as walking or it could be some form of cardio in the gym. Uh, and then there's some technology that we use, so I'm going to talk about those. You can either get that from the email or I'm going to give you the heads up now to set that up. But let me talk a bit more about the objective of this challenge, what will happen at the end of this challenge and over the webinars. So at the end of the challenge, each of us each of you becomes someone that you've altered your relationship to three things, food, exercise, and yourself. You know, many of you think, I can't do this, I don't know if I can do that. We continually shift how you relate to yourself, right? We often relate to ourselves from a limiting belief, and that's based on our past experience of ourselves. We're going to disappear that, so you start relating to yourself newly. Secondly, we understand the real role of your body, your mind, and your intellect. So we bring a bit of philosophy and psychology into here. We start having you relate to your body as a vehicle. We start relating to you as a mind, your mind as a messenger. It's, it's a messenger that tells you uh, it's receiving a message called pain from the muscle, and it will tell your body to say, now stop doing that. Your mind is also the muscle which will, say, which will remember the taste of foods. So we rewire and reprogram your taste to new foods. Uh, your mind is going to remind you of memories associated with certain food types. So the last time you were at a party, you were eating pizza and cake, and you have now associated those in your mind to happy moments, to happy events. So we're going to rewire those. We're going to rewire other things that will have you be happy and energetic and full of energy. And the third thing we work on is our intellect. So our intellect is this, our greater why, our purpose, our real uh, raison d'etre, why we exist. If you guys are all being small in your life, whether uh, you don't have to be a big politician or, or change the world, uh, like you think it's done on, the, on TV, but you are changing the world by changing someone in your family, by being around longer for somebody in your family, by being a great dad, by being a great mom, by being a great husband, right? It's getting connected to whatever your purpose is and start relating to yourself as to live that purpose, I've got to be at a certain level of energy, strength, and health. Um, we've got five minutes more, guys. It's a 45-minute call. Uh, we have Emma that's also joined us. Welcome, Emma. Uh, and... Uh, the third thing of this challenge is we're going to leverage social media to inspire our communities and the world to live a healthy lifestyle so that together we transform lives. And I shared this earlier, social media is now filled with positive, healthy, and inspiring content. The world and the lives around us are now inspired and choose to start living. So what are the apps? Uh, so we're going to talk about a few apps. We have four apps here, and you can take a screenshot here if, uh, if you need to. So the first app is called RunKeeper. So everybody must download this app. It's available on Android or iOS, right? Uh, this app is what you're going to use whenever you participate in an activity. You go for a walk, you go for a run, you go for a bike ride, you use this app. Um, if you're doing it on a treadmill, you will have to manually log the activity you did. So we recommend you take a photo of this, the screen reading of your treadmill or machine. But if you're going outdoors, you just switch it on, say, start walking or go walking. And as you're walking, you have to switch on your GPS, use your GPS, and it will track and map the route that you walk. Uh, you then have an option from that app to share it directly to Facebook or Twitter. And when you do, we invite you to use the hashtag FitBanker or FBX90. Uh, that way we will get to see it. It will come up in my news feed. Also on RunKeeper, for me to see your activity there and comment there and acknowledge you and view your uh, how effective your workouts are, uh, you have to search under friends, and under friends search for FitBanker, one word, search for us and add us as a friend. And similarly on my fitness pal, my fitness pal is an app 
where we record the food that we eat. Now, we will talk about this one a bit more uh, next week on webinar one, uh, and we will talk about some of the settings that you have to work on. But if you take a screenshot here, you might be able to figure it out while playing with that app. So you have to set, enter in there your current weight, your target weight, and uh, you have to enter what are called macro goals. So I'll walk through that in a bit more depth in webinar one, but we want to now be eating what's called, it's kind of called a zone diet, uh, but it's not, a lot of people think that we go carb free, we don't. We focus on a particular type of carbohydrate intake, but we consume 30% of our calories will be coming from protein, 30% from fat, and 40% will come from carbs, but specific type of carbs. And also the fat, we will coach you on what types of fats are good, what are not good. Um, so the email you get on Saturday, which tells you the foods to avoid, will already begin to start factoring that in and make it easier to get to these goals. Um, under your diary settings, I need to be able to review what you're eating. And so you need to go under settings, diary settings, diary sharing, and then change your diary view to public. So that way I can view what you are having and you need to add me, FitBanker. So if this is straightforward, take a screenshot. I recommend you take a screenshot now of this and then you can read it at your pace. And these are the first two apps are the main ones. Now the third one is very similar to the second app, the calorie, carb, and fat counter. And it's very similar to my fitness pal, but one thing different is that it's linked to our own app called FitBanker. So you want to search for an app called FitBanker, and inside that app, there are some 3D demonstrations of exercises and how we can do certain exercises. So you can download that, and when you get your training programs, which you will usually get between day 10 and day 14, uh, you might not be clear on how to do a certain exercise. You can search for it under that FitBank app, and there will be a 3D video demonstrating how that's done. Any questions so far on this? No. Okay, Bipin, Uncle, any questions? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I've, I've already downloaded RunKeeper and My Fitness Pal. Okay. So I need to do the other two on the thing there. Yeah. All right, all right, excellent. And then add, add us uh, as FitBanker and the friends, yeah. and then we will add you back, and yeah. then we can get to see each other's thing. I also record my food there, so sometimes if you need to see what am I eating, my, my diary is public, so you can get to see what I'm eating on a daily basis. All right. uh, but we will create something that's specific for your body type and your goals uh, when we get yeah. your questionnaire responses. Yeah, um, but, uh, like I said, I haven't received the questionnaire yet, so let's see. Okay, I'm going to check with my teammate to see if yeah. that's gone out, and you just need to also yeah. all make sure that in your inbox you have contact at fitbanker.com and add that to your address yeah. oh. so it doesn't go to spam or it doesn't go to promotion. Yeah. If you're using Gmail, it might go to a folder called promotions and therefore okay. you'll only be able to see it from desktop. You might not see it on mobile. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, so this is for people that are listening in. That uh, There's a number of people that will be watching the recording. And uh, the online price is gone. But if you're listening to the recording, if you've joined the webinar, uh, we've got a few packs that we're giving at an offer of 209 uh, And you can access this at the £600 pack using the code WELLBEING. If uh, this is someone that's watching this on recording or if you're uh, dialing in and there's something you want to find out about, you can message us. But we are only giving this because even joining a free info webinar is you taking an action to invest in your life uh, or something in your world. So if you guys, um, and those of you that are on, if you have somebody else in your community that would like to join, you can give them a reference code, referral code, call, uh, which would should have also been sent in the email to you, but if you need one, you can let us know. But the online price is otherwise uh, 299 and the people that go and sign up directly will be paying that price. And I'm going to end with this quote, the quote by Bill Gates, and to reiterate what we're here to create and cause, which is leaders. And as we look ahead into the next century, leaders will be those who empower others. And that's really what we're looking of you, of each of you, to be that for your families, your communities. Uh, we're going to end there. That is the end of our webinar, and I'm going to open the floor to any questions. Um, before we go into questions, actually, we've got a special uh, Emma Coyne who's joined us. She joined us midway through. She's a participant. Uh, she's done two challenges. She's completing a second one. And um, uh, I'm hoping we're looking to have Emma 
be a contributor for our team to support people on. So if you're on Messenger, you'd have seen already some inspiring uh, messages from her. Um, Emma, are you able to say what's up, introduce yourself, and uh, anything you'd like to share? Yeah, hi everybody, and welcome to FitBanker. I just want to say I wish you all an amazing challenge. So yeah, I'm Emma Coyne. I, I've done uh, the 90-day challenge, and then I encored, and I'm just completing, just about to complete the encore, the 90 days. It's been an absolutely incredible journey, and you're totally and utterly in the right place. We're going to support you 100% all the way, so if, if you fall, we'll pick you back up again. Whatever you need to know, no question is too, is too small or too big. Just, just, just keep in touch with us and you know once you get into the group and things just just share and if if you're struggling with something just say it and you know I, I, I just can't express it enough how much you know I can't wait to get to know you all awesome thank you so much Emma. Uh, any questions Bipin Manisha no really. all right great um, so Manisha, you're already part of the closed group. That one will be a lot more interactive as you post any questions or comments. Others in the program will be able to respond to you and support you uh, in addition to myself. And if you tag me whenever you need my, my response, I will also respond to that. Um, and uh, Bipinaka, as soon as you've got your photo up, then please uh, join that closed yeah. group. And anybody else listening to this on recording, uh, please do the same. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to us on our uh, Facebook page. Sure. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up there. Thank you all for being on. And uh, see you guys all in the challenge. Bye. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye. All right. Bye.